Okay, guys. So uh, example four. Uh, this is this is the real deal. Now we're in it. Now you know a whole bunch of stuff about how to solve polynomials. You know about multiplicity. You know about how to graph them, find zeros. And so now I want to deal with some pretty complex ones. So this is a pretty complex polynomial. And we're trying to find all the zeros. All for us means uh, real and imaginary. Okay, so every single zero. So that means that this degree is 5. Okay, which means we should have 5 zeros or five solutions if it were equal to zero. Okay, so uh, we said before how you start this, we have no technique for factoring or solving a fifth degree polynomial straight out the gate. We don't have any techniques like that. So what we do is, uh, you know, we could guess a bunch of zeros and stuff. We showed you some of the ways that uh, mathematicians used to guess zeros, but we're not going to do that because we have technology and, you know, uh, you could sit and guess zeros and take an hour to solve this polynomial, but we're going to show you a, a shortcut. Okay, so what you should do is say um, from my calculator, just like you did last lesson, and go find a zero, find an initial zero that I can start with. Okay, and we always want to find an exact zero. So you're going to go on your calculator and do this. I'm going to go on Desmos and do this because I don't have my calculator, uh, my graphing calculator software on here. Um, but it's the same thing essentially. We've already gone over this, but important now you know some different things. So uh, Desmos shows me the solutions for this one is negative one and two, but two occurs once, multiplicity one. But importantly, negative one has multiplicity at least two, right? It's even because it only touches. You can see the graph only touches, okay? So what that means for me is as I'm solving my polynomial, I'm allowed to substitute this zero twice. I can do synthetic division with this zero twice. Okay, that's what it means. So uh, this is very useful information. You didn't know this before, but now you do. Multiplicity two, I can use that twice. I can use this one only once because multiplicity looks like it's only one there. It's odd. Okay, so let's start with um, two. Let's just use two first. Let's say for my calculator, I saw that x is two and then you do synthetic division with two. Uh, look for any skipped exponents here. There are none, everything looks good. So I just have one, negative four, four, 10, negative 13, and negative 14, okay? And then do synthetic division, bring things down, multiply. So you get uh, two, and then add down, you get negative two, negative four, add down, zero, two, zero, add down, 10, 2 times 10 is 20, add down, you get negative, uh, you get 7, and 2 times 7 is 14, add down, you get 0, okay? This must happen if this is a 0, that was the factor theorem that told us that, okay? So, good, something good happened, yes. And now we know what this polynomial is over here, this is, went from a fifth degree, then we divided by linear divisor, so now it goes down to a fourth degree, okay? x squared minus 2x cubed plus 0x squared, uh, sorry, x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 0x squared uh, plus 10x plus 7. And now we would want to set that equal to 0 and solve that. But this is a fourth degree polynomial that has five terms. We also don't have any clue how to factor that uh, uh, besides guessing zeros. So instead of guessing zeros, we're going to go back to our graph. You don't have to graph this new polynomial. You don't have to graph this new polynomial. You use the same polynomial and look at its roots, okay, or its zeros. So we go back to the graph of this polynomial, and I just look at, wait, I've used two, I've used it once, and the multiplicity is one, so I can't use it again. Now I go look at the other zeros of this function, and I say, well, negative one occurs, and it occurs at least twice, so I can use it at least twice when I do my synthetic division to come up with uh, exact zeros, okay? And so I'm just going to go here and say again, uh, from my calculator, okay, at least give attribution that you stole these from your calculator, okay? You took a shortcut, uh, and then say uh, negative one, and then do the synthetic division again. So we just bring these uh, coefficients straight down here. So 1, negative 2, 
0, 10, and 7. Notice there's a skipped one, but it's taken care of. Okay, skipped power of x. And so bring down and do synthetic division, and you get negative 3, 3, add down. You get 3, multiply that, negative 3, this is 7, multiply that, negative 7, and I get 0. Okay, good. That must happen if this is a 0 by the factor theorem. Now the problem is I get another polynomial. It's now gone from a fourth to a third power, x cubed, minus 3x squared, plus 3x, plus 7. I want to set that equal to 0 and solve that, but I don't know how to do that either. So what you try and do, we have a technique for four terms for a polynomial. Uh, we have that technique that's called factor by grouping. So you try and say, can I take out an x squared here? And what's the common factor here? Nothing. So I get this. Uh, this should hopefully match that or something like that. Ooh, this doesn't work. Okay. You can rearrange the terms. You can try different things. That doesn't work. I can't factor this by grouping. And that's the only technique I have for a four-term polynomial. All right. So in this case, we're going to abandon this idea and go, that didn't work either. So now I'm stuck. You should always do that, by the way. First check if you can factor by grouping. That's a good thing to do. It's much faster than what I'm about to do. So now you go back and say, I couldn't use that. But we know that I can use this 0 again. I can use negative 1 again because it has multiplicity 2. So I can use it again. So we're going to use it again. And you'll see it seems like we're just cheating all the time. But actually, we're not. You'll see that something happens here where we actually get a good answer that's better than purely using your calculator. There is a reason why we're doing all this junk. Okay, It's not junk, it's beauty. So we're using x equals negative 1 again. And so you bring this down, you get that, you get this, okay, 4, and down 7, negative 7. Ah, yes. Okay, negative 1 worked again. Good, okay, because of the factor theorem. So now I have this polynomial. 1x squared minus 4x plus 7 equals 0. But this we know all about. This was our whole first chapter. Okay, So we know all about this. I can solve this. I can do what I want. Problem is you can try and factor this, but it doesn't factor. Okay, If you try and factor it, you get a negative discriminant. You can check it. Your b squared minus 4ac, if you plug that stuff in, I think your discriminant is negative 12, which tells you that it does not definitely not factor. In fact, it's going to give me imaginary solutions. So what you do is uh, use quadratic formula and just solve it. Okay. So, so far we have, let me use different color here. We have, this is a solution. This is a solution. This is a solution. Remember, if something occurs twice, we must count it twice by the fundamental theorem of algebra's corollary. We must count it twice. Okay. Now, what I have here is my last solution. So we just solve it. So uh, using quadratic formula, x equals negative b, so that would be plus 4 plus minus square root of b squared, that's 16, minus 4 times 1 times 7, all over 2 times 1. And so you get x is 4 plus minus root 16 minus 28. That's, uh, this is 16 minus 28, which is negative 12 over 2. Uh, but you know how to deal with this. This is not a problem for you. That's the type of student you are at this point. So uh, you have an i out here. This becomes an i. And this is root 12, but you know that that is just 4 times 3, so it's 2 root 3. Okay. So 2 root 3 for the 12 over 2. And then you just say, ah, I can reduce this by dividing by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Since all of them divide by 2, you are allowed to do that. And so basically your final answer here for the imaginary part is this, after reducing. Okay. So we actually have to say I have five zeros. So our first one up here was 2 negative 1, negative 1, and then this one. So x equals 2, x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1, and then x equals 2 plus or minus root 3i. That is 
five solutions because this is technically two. Okay, so we know we found all the answers. Useful to know how many answers I'm supposed to have. Five. Okay, we found all the answers. That is a pretty tricky question, right? Not all of them are that bad. We're trying to do some of the harder ones with you uh, together, and then you can try some of the harder ones by yourself, but also a lot of easier ones. All right, so that's that. Uh, let's proceed, do another one. Uh, I'll try and do at least two more with you here. I don't think I'll make a video for all of them because some of them are quite similar. Okay, some of them are quite similar. Yeah. So, in any case, we'll go through and see uh, an easier one, better B. Right? So, here it is. Uh, basically, find all the zeros for this thing. Now, the degree is 3. So I know that implies three zeros, okay? So I know what I'm looking for, three zeros. Now, can we factor this by grouping? That's the question. If you look at that carefully, you'll see that's not going to work. Okay, I can't use grouping to factor this. So I have no other technique to factor this. So I cheat again. Uh, I can guess a bunch of zeros. That's going to take you forever, but you can use the techniques uh, to guess zeros. Uh, like the uh, uh, rational root theorem or whatever like that we learned, but that's going to take forever. So we just cheat again by saying from my calculator. Uh, we, help the, we use the calculator to help us guess quicker. So let me switch to the next graph. So that's this one. okay? And then we find zeros. So remember, these must be exact zeros. So it must be exactly... Uh, a number that I can represent exactly, so basically up to a rational number. If it's irrational or something like that, I can't use that to um, substitute into my equation. So always use zeros that are closer to zero. That's what I would do. Smaller numbers are easier to work with consistently. Okay, so I have two choices, negative three with multiplicity two or negative one. And so what you do is say, I'm going to take negative one and try that one. So Let's do that. Negative 1. Oh, I'm sorry. That doesn't look very good. Negative 1. And then say negative 1 and do a synthetic division. Make sure none of the powers of x are skipped. They aren't. And then bring stuff down. Uh, sorry, that's a 6. <clears throat> negative 6, that's a 9. And negative 9, and that's a 0. Okay, great. So again, that must happen by the factor theorem. So I have x squared plus... 6x plus 9 is 0. And you look at this and go, hey, it's Christmas because this is a perfect square trinomial. You know all about that. Okay, So this is x plus 3 squared equals 0. You can factor that very, very quickly. Okay, So what you get then is x equals, well, let me take it a bit slower and show you what you're doing. What you're actually doing is saying take a square root both sides. This is gone. x plus 3 equals 0, so x is negative 3. Now, list all your zeros in the end. x is negative 1 from over here that we found first. And then this occurs twice. Twice. Okay. You can also see it in the graph. It occurs twice. That's the multiplicity. So you just write x, minus, x equals negative 1 x equals negative 3, and x equals negative 3. That must be the case because it must be three zeros. Okay, So we know we did it correctly. Life is good. All right? All right, that's uh, a very challenging one and a much easier one. So let's try another challenging one. Let me see which one we should look at here. Mm. Should we do C or D? I don't think that there's really too much of a difference between these two. They're both just kind of tricky, okay? And they both have similar solutions. So let's just do C. Let's just do C, okay? So C, uh, let me switch to a different color this time. So again, complicated, degree 5. I'm looking for five zeros, okay, because it's degree 5. I don't know what to do. I don't have a technique to factor this thing aside. Or, or find zeros aside from guessing my initial one or two or three. And so I'm just going to go back to my calculator and do this. So uh, you graph it on your calculator and you get this. Now you get uh, some zeros. Here's one. One is a zero and negative two is a zero. Okay. 
So I'm going to start with negative 2, even though that's technically uh, a bigger number than 1. I mean, uh, uh, absolute value bigger number than 1. Um, what I'm going to do there is use this first. Okay, I'm just going to use negative 2 first. You can use 1 first as well. That's fine. And remember, this has at least multiplicity 2, so I can use 1 at least twice. I can only use negative 2 once. So I'm going to use negative 2 because it can only be used once first. All right? And you should, again, say, uh, you know, from my calculator, uh, I said that x is negative 2. Okay, just so you know where that came from. Okay, x is negative 2, so 1, negative 2. Oh, careful, we're skipping something here. I guess this one is a bit more tricky. Skipping something there from a fourth power to a second power, so I have to put 0 for 0x zero cubed. Uh, and then put your 8, I'm not skipping anything there, and then 6. Okay. Uh, bring it down and do your thing. So negative 2, that's negative 4, multiply 8, add, that's 8. Multiply, you get negative 16. Add down, that's negative 8. Multiply, that's positive 16. Add down, that's uh, positive 3. And then multiply, you get negative 6. Okay, so again, that worked. Everything's good. Here's my new polynomial. I went from a fifth power to a fourth power. Uh, this is what I have. Okay, and you can think, oh, can I factor that? And the answer is not really. So you're going to have to guess some other zeros. But uh, we've already done this from my calculator. You know that x equals 1. Was it 1? 1 is a solution that occurs twice, so I can use this twice. Okay, to, to do synthetic division. The reason we're doing this is, why am I even doing any of this? I have three solutions I can see. That tells me that there's two solutions I can't see. I must find the other two. They're probably imaginary, which is why I can't see them on the real axis. Okay, So there is merit to this, even though you're feeling like, what are we doing a bunch of junk on my calculator for? Okay, uh, There's merit to this. We're finding answers that you can't find on your calculator. So we are doing something actually useful, all right? Uh, and so you go one and do synthetic division. So bring all these coefficients down, and you get what? One, negative four, eight, negative eight, and three. Uh, and do your thing, all right? Negative three, add now five. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's 5 minus 3, that's negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3, and that's a 0. Okay, that worked. And again, try, always try and see, can I factor? So I went from a fourth power up here. This must be a cubed 3x squared plus 5x minus 3. Okay, try and factor it. See, can I factor by grouping now? Because I have a fourth four-term polynomial. Uh, and the answer is, no, it doesn't work. Okay, you can try it, but it doesn't work. So we're back to this again. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm 1, negative 3, 5, negative 3. And then bring it down. Do your synthetic division. Keep going. I get negative 2. That's 3. I do that. I get 3. Add down. I get 0. Okay, so, oh, let me not do that. Uh, this one worked as well. Now, I knew it was going to work because it occurs twice, okay, as a solution, as multiplicity 2. But now, finally, here's what I get. I went from a cube now to a square. x squared minus 2x plus 3. And lo and behold, that doesn't factor either. It has another negative discriminant, okay? So that doesn't factor. So just do quadratic formula. x equals negative b, which here would be plus 2, plus minus root negative b squared, uh, minus 4 times 1 times 3, okay, all over 2 times 1. All right, so x is 2 plus minus root 4 minus 12 over 2, so x is 2 plus minus well, 4 minus 12, that's negative 8. I'll do it slowly, negative 8. So you get 2 plus minus. Now, 8 is 4 times 2, so you get 2 
root 2, and then negative would come out as an i over 2. And then all of these can reduce. All of them are divisible by 2, so I'm allowed to do this. So I have 1 plus minus root 2i. Okay, And list all your solutions when you're done. So what are my solutions? Uh, negative 2, 1, 1, and this. So x is negative 2, x is 1, x is 1, x is 1 plus or minus root 2i. Oh, that's a wild root 2, uh, root 2i. Okay, so five solutions for a fifth degree polynomial. Life is good. We did it. Check. All right. Uh, you can do the next one. I'm not going to do this one. It's a bit easier, smaller, uh, uh, less terms. It's a bit easier to do. Um, same process, you go through, guess zeros from your calculator, so it's not really guessing, and you do the same process. It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, that's example four.